Turning now to the presidential campaign, it's all over but the counting of delegates. And soon, even that won't be necessary except for the record books. President Biden and former President Donald Trump are both less than 150 delegates away from clinching their respective party nominations. Republican voters in four states vote Tuesday with 161 delegates at stake. Democrats in three states, one territory and those living abroad have 254 delegates to hand out. Both candidates are already in general election mode, focusing on their differences as they hit the campaign trail. CBS News Chief White House correspondent Nancy Cordes reports. Campaigning in New Hampshire today, President Biden brought up the company his opponent kept this weekend. He was a Viktor Orban who talked about democracy being a problem. Viktor Orban is the authoritarian-leaning leader of Hungary who has cracked down on the judiciary, the press and LGBTQ plus rights. He drew high praise from Donald I Trump at Mar-a-Lago. He said, this is the way it's going to be, and that's the end of it, right? He's the boss. And now he's a great leader, fantastic leader. Orban later told the Hungarian press that Trump had promised he would not give a penny to Ukraine if elected. The Trump campaign disputes that. They're also fielding questions about Trump's abrupt reversal on TikTok. He now opposes a ban on the Chinese-owned social media site. It was a meeting that lasted for a few minutes. In an interview this morning, Trump denied that his change of heart came it's after meeting with financier Jeff Yass, whose fake. fund has a multi-billion dollar stake in TikTok's parent company. I don't think I ever met him before, but he never mentioned TikTok. In the same interview, Trump suggested he is open to cutting Medicare or Social Security to save money. You know Biden can. seized on that in New Hampshire. I'm never going to allow that to happen. I won't cut Social Security. I won't cut Medicare. In the wake of his State of the Union address, Biden is hitting battleground states and airing a new ad about his age. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. In Rome, Georgia this weekend, Trump called Biden's State of the Union speech an angry, dark, hate-filled rant. Then he mocked the president's lifelong stutter. Mary said, I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. And Nancy Cordes joins me from the White House. Uh, Nancy, tell me about the shift you see in, in President Biden's messaging now that the general election is upon us. It's pretty striking, actually, John. Uh, the president and his campaign apparatus are taking on Donald Trump much more directly. Uh, just look at today, for example. Trump did an interview in the morning in which he said that he was open to cutting Medicare and Social Security, generally not a very uh, politically popular position to take. The White House had a statement out within an hour hitting him on that. And then by the afternoon in New Hampshire, President Biden was bringing it up on the campaign trail. And by this evening, they had released a digital ad on social media hitting Trump as well. So as we move into the general election, I think you're going to see a lot more of this rapid response style, style politics where he's coming after Trump much more directly. Keep in mind that it wasn't that long ago that he didn't want to call him Donald Trump at all. He would only say, my predecessor. And tell me what the White House is saying, how you read this uh, latest tension between Biden and Netanyahu. Uh, well, it, it's an ongoing challenge for them because uh, while the president is making it more and more clear that he disagrees with Netanyahu's approach, uh, his strategy when it comes to this war, when he, he warned in public this weekend that uh, it would be a red line for him if Netanyahu were to launch a ground invasion of Rafa, he really didn't put any uh, meat behind that red line. He didn't say what it was that would be the consequence if if Israel were actually to go ahead with this. Um, and and sure enough, not that much long later, uh, Netanyahu himself said that he's going to move ahead with those plans and that his red line is preventing another October 7th attack by Hamas. Uh, President Biden is, is sort of stuck here because uh, there is no appetite in this White House for clamping down on U.S. aid to Israel and the Israelis know it. Nancy Cordes at the White House. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome.